step of glycolysis is actual energy investment. The first reaction is to go from glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. So, as you may have noticed, we added a phosphate to glucose at what? The 6 carbon, right? So, you do need to really know, at least for this, the structure of glucose and the structure of fructose. Other stuff, mm, not really that important. But for the purposes of this class, you really need to know that. The means by which we do this is by the use of ATP and by the use of an enzyme known as hexokinase. And some things that we want to say about hexokinase is that it is a the hexose, like a six carbon sugar, it's a kinase enzyme, so it's going to add a phosph uh, phosphorylated at certain sections. And um, it has a hydrophobic active site, and it's a really huge, I guess, proponent of the induced fit model. And uh, one of the things that you're going to notice, and I want you to kind of take note of, is that this reaction is not an equilibriating reaction. This is a unidirectional reaction, right? So we're taking ATP, we're using hexokinase to convert glucose into glucose 6-phosphate, uh, and also we're going to be making, it's not superbly important, but just to keep our equations balanced here, ADP. And there's really just two things that I want to say about glucose 6-phosphate that I think is important. And so, what you know about insulin is that when we talked about uh, all different types of ca cascade events is that insulin allows glucose to come in as a form of passive transport. And it goes down a concentration gradient, but I don't know about you, but we have metabolic needs that often surpass the amount of glucose that we can get in strictly based off of a concentration gradient. So we have to have a way to get glucose into the cell and to get it to not leave the cell the moment we have that concentration gradient reaching equilibrium. And the way that we do this is by phosphorylating it. Once we phosphorylate it, one, that changes the concentration gradient, but two, it can't leave through those channels. Another thing that we want to say about this is as it, obviously it has a phosphate group attached to it, this has a, a phosphorylation potential. It may not seem like that impressive to you. To me, energetically speaking, what we're about to do with this is amazing. We're about to take something that obviously with the use of ATP, and this is a not an equilibriating reaction here, but we're going to drag that phosphorylation potential through this long series of reactions and end up doing more phosphorylation to the point where actually we're going to yield more energy than what we invested in. And that's not a violation of the law of conservation of energy, but we're just going to be able to get it into a more efficient form. So whenever I say that our cells are the most energy efficient machines on the planet, I really mean that. But anyways, the next reaction or the next enzyme that we have is to go from glucose 6-phosphate. And we're going to basically just convert that into the isomer of it, which is fructose 6-phosphate. The enzyme involved in this is known as phosphoglucose isomerase. And since we're really just converting glucose into its isomer, what's amazing to me is that we don't have to use ATP to do this. This is, we don't, the, the reaction just catalyzes itself based on the nature of an enzyme. And in this context, a lot of isomerase enzymes, as you're going to find out, are acid-based catalysis. So for some fun notes about fructose 6-phosphate, what we want to make note of it, and this is something that I think is really interesting to me, is that the, the furanose version of it, that's the one that's favored at equilibrium. One of the things that you're going to notice, a lot of what we've talked about with the, just the name here, glycolysis. Gly meaning sugar, lysis meaning to separate. But the only one that we can actually cleave into from a six carbon sugar to two three carbon sugars is not glucose, it's actually fructose. And in this and in many other pathways which we're about to talk about. The next reaction is to go from fructose six phosphate to fructose one six bisphosphate. We do, went from fructose 6-phosphate to fructose 1 and 6 bisphosphate, so we've added another phosphate group to it. What have we done? Well, we've had to use ATP for this reaction, obviously. That's why this is called the energy investment phase. And um, as you can imagine, another type of kinase. The new type of kinase is called phosphofructokinase, or PFK for short. Two notes that I want to make about phosphofructokinase, and I'm just going to go drag these bad boys out over here. One of the things that you'll see is that anytime we have a reaction that is not reversible, right? So PFK, that was not reversible. It was a kinase reaction. Hexokinase was not reversible. This isomerase reaction is reversible. But any reaction that is not reversible, that is a major site of regulation in glycolysis. As you're going to learn later on, phosphofructokinase is the primary regulator of this. But what makes this so amazing is the fact that this reaction is so one-sided. And the reason that it's so one-sided is because what we have here is fructose 6-phosphate Sorry, is, re is reacting in equilibrium with glucose 6-phosphate. But once PFK comes along, we have trapped fructose 
It's being held down by those extra phosphate groups. It's trapped in the fructose form, and it can't go back to becoming glucose 6-phosphate. For keeping score, we do have also another molecule of ADP from the use of the ATP. But that's not really important at this point, at least. Okay, so that's it for stage one. Once we're at, we've made fructose 1,6-bisphosphate, we are done with stage one, and we're going to start to develop ourselves into stage two. And stage two is literally one reaction step, so we're not really too worried about that. But what we're going to be doing is we're going to be cleaving it, all right? We're about to get into the lysis of glycolysis. And um, the enzymes that are always involved in cleavage in this context are known as aldolase. And this is going to give us two products. This is going to give us uh, glyceraldehyde 3 phosphate, DHAP, which is known as dihydroxyacetone phosphate. What we just done, well, we just did this reaction here. We just went from a six carbon fructose and we went ahead and just cleaved that into two three carbon sugars called trioses that both have one phosphate attached to them. Now G3P uh, can go on and, and it's going to go straight to stage three, right? It moves on to stage three, but uh, dihydroxyacetone phosphate um, has to be converted into G3P. All right, so we're going to convert the other, uh, the dihydroxyacetone phosphate into a molecule of G3P. So we're going to have two molecules of G3P going on to stage three. The way that we do this is through the use of an enzyme known as triose phosphate, so three carbon sugar that's been phosphorylated, isomerase, triose phosphate isomerase. And um, some notes that we want to make about this is that this is, I should have probably drawn this a bit more biased, but at equilibrium, it's going to favor the DHAP. Why does it favor the DHAP and not the G3P? Because the DHAP is in the keto form, so it's a ketose, whereas the G3P is the aldose form. And what we're about to find out later on is that G3P is very, very quickly removed, quickly removed into stage three. And just like Le Chatelier's principle tells us that even at equilibrium, if we remove enough of our product in large amounts amounts, the reaction will proceed forward. And that's how we can get this reaction to go forward. And just like we had talked about up here with phosphoglucose isomerase, anytime you see the word isomerase, I want you to think about acid-base catalysis. Okay, so let's review what we had talked about. We have glucose reacting with hexokinase and ATP to give us glucose 6-phosphate. This is a irreversible reaction. And just like all other irreversible reactions, this is a major site of control in glycolysis. Glucose 6-phosphate is going to react in equilibrium with phosphoglucose isomerase through an acid-base catalysis reaction to give us fructose 6-phosphate. And then fructose 6-phosphate is going to be converted through an irreversible reaction uh, by phosphofructokinase and ATP into fructose 1,6-bisphosphate. And then that is going to be cleaved by aldolase into G3P and DHAP. So they're both three carbon sugars with a phosphate attached to them because this was a six carbon sugar with two phosphates attached to it. And this is going to have to be converted into G3P through another isomerase with an acid-base catalysis. And in doing so, it's going to quickly remove G3P so that this reaction can proceed forward. But at the end of the day, what we've done is we've gone from stage one to stage two, and we're going to proceed on to stage three with G3P.